my name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Instagram at JR from PTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the 3D pop-out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links. We can of course create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner. Click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again, click and drag, click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated, so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, that's Shift Option on the Mac. Now at this point, you can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to, so I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask. In the properties panel you can click on mask edge if you don't see the properties panel you can go into the window properties click on mask edge and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted so you keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep also with this brush selected I can click and drag here on the hair and hopefully we'll get better selection didn't do that good of a job here so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment so I'm gonna press ok click on the brush tool paint with white in areas that I want to keep so I'm just gonna paint with white in these areas here and I know I'm selecting some of the sky but that's okay I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final result. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen. And what we're gonna work on now is extra elements that are gonna help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use this shovel with snow, so let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock, they're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay, then I can hold shift and backspace, or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. 
Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments. You can't see the corner handles, so I'm gonna press Control Zero, Command Zero on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm gonna adjust them accordingly. I'm holding the Libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm gonna do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm gonna click on the lasso tool and I'm gonna select this element first. So I'm gonna select it, go to on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. If I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about. And I'm just gonna paint with this color here under the board. If you haven't already, so I'm gonna press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. So I'm just gonna paint with white in these areas here. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's Mandy on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also touch, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm gonna do now is right above this snow element here, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the eyedropper tool, select that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light. Something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board. And actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board. So maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down. So maybe something like that. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this.